And former BBC journalist Laura Trevelyan quit her job to call for reparations to be paid to Caribbean descendants of enslaved people after she found out that her own ancestors had owned over 1,000 enslaved Africans. Earlier this year, Laura and her relatives made history by paying £100,000 in personal reparations to the people of Grenada and delivered a public apology. And here are some connections for you. The Labour MP Clive Lewis's ancestors were enslaved on Grenadian plantations and they reckon most likely by Laura's ancestors. In a new podcast, Heirs of Enslavement, Clive and Laura explore their joint history. And they're both joining us. Great to see you both. Good um, Laura, let's start with you. I mean, you can't win, can you? Um, you've been attacked and accused of not paying enough. £100,000 isn't enough in reparations. And you will also be aware that on the other side of that, that coin, there is a substantial block of public opinion that actually simply cannot understand why you should bear responsibility for what your distant ancestors did. Nothing to do with you directly. I mean, the apology, the £100,000 in reparations. Can you explain why you were so powerfully motivated to apologise for the past? Well, thanks, Richard. And yes, you're right, it's a difficult needle to thread. I guess, you know, being a journalist, a storyteller at the BBC for 30 years, it just felt to me like this is such a huge bit of Britain's history which isn't properly told and isn't acknowledged. The fact that Clive Lewis and I, he, a lawmaker in Parliament, me, a journalist in the United States, that we're linked by this horrible history and the fact that there are current-day legacies in the Caribbean of ill health, of persistent economic underdevelopment. It just felt to me when I was able to go to Grenada last year and make a documentary about this for the BBC, that there's something really compelling here oh, I agree and that completely by trying with to you. confront uh, the past, I maybe we can heal. I agree with every word of that. It is, it is a compelling story and your connection is absolutely compelling. But what I'm asking, you haven't answered this, so you're a journalist, you know you should. Um, <laughs> why do you feel personally guilty? Guilty enough to pay a six-figure sum in reparations and guilty enough to make an apology for your ancestors. Why you? Nothing to do well, with you. Well, I guess I would say that I don't feel guilty, Richard, because it's not something that I did, as no. you've pointed out. It's something that my ancestors did. But I do feel a sense of responsibility yeah. because I can see that although that wealth from slavery isn't with our family anymore, nearly 200 years after abolition, definitely the social standing is and the social privilege is there. Mm. And I felt like I was in a position to set an example and look at the debate that's been generated, the fact that you've kindly invited me onto mm. Good Morning yeah. Britain, the fact that Clive Lewis and I were able to go and make this podcast, Heirs of Enslavement, and explore this past, I think that says to me that it's more than just a talking point. Yeah. Uh, it's a really essential bit of Britain's history that isn't properly confronted. Well, you've Fair quit enough. your BBC job, Laura, to campaign for uh, securing financial reparations for the Caribbean. Clive, the connection between you is both admirable and, I have to say, chilling. Mm. It's chilling. It is. Laura's ancestors owned slaves. Yeah. And they likely owned... Yeah. Owned your <clears throat> ancestors. Yeah. What, what... How does that make you feel? <clears throat> Listen to the podcast. <laughs> yeah, I mean, heirs of enslavement, I mean, it's the heirs of enslavement, yeah, on all good podcast platforms. Sorry, um, I mean, it's an emotion... It was an emotion roller coaster. It was a real journey. Um, you know, someone growing up who did look into the history of, of enslavement, um, I went, I've been through every emotion, you know, anger, sadness, you know, um, all of it. Um, being, with, being with Laura, making the podcast with Laura, finding out about our shared history, took me on a really interesting journey. And in, in so many ways, and I think for Laura as well, it's the journey of Britain. It's, a, it's our story. And I'm quite aware I wouldn't be a member of parliament able to raise these issues mm -hmm. unless one of my ancestors had been a slave owned by Laura. It's so complex, yeah. but it's such a lovely story to begin Can to pick apart. Tell us what happened to your family. What, what have you found out about where they came from, mm. how they were treated, what yeah. they were forced to do? Yeah, so once you were taken from Africa, um, around a, a good percentage of those who are on, that sh on the middle, what was called the Middle Passage would have died in the appalling conditions. Then when you got to where, whichever colony it was, which obviously we know that a genocide had been committed by French, British, potentially Spanish um, colonialists because the indigenous population were wiped out, 3 million um, when they arrived, 30,000 when 
Britain and the other co um, colonial powers left, um, there was a brutal system of basically breaking people. So psychological, physical, around about 25% of, of those Africans brought there would have, would have died uh, mm. within the first year. Then, then basically you were an asset and your life expectancy was basically five to 10 years. That's how long you had to live. You were worked and you were underfed and worked, but it was worked out very carefully how long, how much work you could get out of someone with minimum food and brutal conditions, the psychological conditioning, and basically that supply of free labor for 200 years. Mm. Um, Her ancestors did that to your ancestors. Yes, that's right. How did you feel when she contacted you? And basically, as she said herself here, didn't confess to guilt about it, but said she wanted to take responsibility. I, I thought it was amazing mm. um, because what Laura's done, she's opened up a conversation. I mean, there are people like myself, I'm a parliamentarian and I've wanted to raise this issue for a while, but it's difficult for obvious reasons. We know it's difficult. It's a difficult conversation for this country to have because we have told ourselves a story about, you know, being one of the first countries to abolish slavery, not the first, but one of the first countries to abolish slavery and then stopping others from doing it. But there's a whole other side of the story which we don't talk about, about the actual enslavement itself, the brutal treatment. But then what happened after emancipation? You know, it was a brutal system of apartheid. And then what we continue to do to the Caribbean, we left them with literally nothing. After hundreds of years of exploitation, literally left Grenada in 1974 without a penny, no infrastructure, high levels of, of, of illiteracy. And now these are some of the most indebted parts mm. of the world. Yeah. And we took so much from them. And this is just about a conversation about how do we rectify that and it tells us it tells us some things about ourselves as well which i think as a country going into the 21st century yeah. it feels we need to kind of work it out laura i must say i, I identified to some extent with your experience because when i made a bbc program called who do you think you are where they take you back through your, your ancestors mm. and they went back through my, my mother's ancestors i discovered that my great grandfather times seven great 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 was personally responsible for, for genocide, uh, for wiping out a Native American tribe wow. in, in, in North America. And I met one of the few descendants, the few surviving descendants of that tribe. Wow. I met him on the, on the site where the massacre happened in, in, in a forest, in a snow-covered forest. And I, and I share your, your, your sense almost of wonder that your genes, your, your genetics, are looking into the genetics and the genes of the descendants of the, of, the, of the people that your ancestors oppressed. It's a, it's a remarkable moment, isn't it, when you first meet that person? It is, and you know, for Clive and I, when we were there in Grenada and we stood outside the sugarcane plantation, where it's very, very likely that his ancestors were enslaved by mine, and it was chilling, as you were mm. saying. Mm. You know, for Clive, just to think, we were there, it was so incredibly hot. You could imagine the brutal conditions. You could see this elegant plantation house and you could see the horrible conditions that the enslaved would have been laboring under. And just to think that that's Britain's history, that it defines us. And yet, you know, I don't know about you, uh, Richard and Susanna and Clive, but at school, I was taught that Britain abolished slavery and that that was fantastic. So my hope is that Britain can lead the way now in this debate on reparations uh, within Europe and answer the Caribbean's call and that maybe if not this government but perhaps another government if there's a, a change of government next year in Britain will sit down with the Caribbean and talk about their 10-point plan for reparations which has existed for more than a decade and by the way it begins with an apology which is what our family was told would be important by leaders in the Caribbean and we followed their lead. It's, yeah, it's, it's so interesting. Laura and uh, Clive, thank you so much. Thank you both. Thank you. What an incredible connection. Thank yeah. you so much. Um, and so interesting. You can hear all about it in the podcast, Heirs of Ensla Enslavement, uh, wherever you get your podcast. Laura, Clive, thank you very thank much. Thank you both. Thank you very much.